called it Fenway South. But those days are over. The Orioles have dominated the Red Sox over the past two years here at home, winning six of the last seven at the yards. So here they meet again. Two divisional foes fighting for an AL East title that neither one is willing to back down from. Who comes out on top? The Big Time Weekend Series kicks off right now on Madison. The Orioles are on Masson on a gorgeous Friday night at Camden Yards. The Birds are back home tonight welcoming in the Boston Red Sox. It is the opening game in this three-game weekend series. And hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jim Hunter. Mike Bordick in a moment as the Orioles are back home for the first time in almost two weeks, their first home series following the All-Star break. And as the Orioles and the Red Sox get together this weekend, there's the realization that it isn't early anymore. The playoff positioning is at the forefront. Which team will emerge as the AL East champion eventually and will the wildcard teams one or both come from the American League East and when you look at the head-to-head -head over the course of the season within the division you can see why this division is regarded as the most difficult quality top to bottom even the Blue Jays at 18 and 30 they throw that hitting at you you just don't know what you're going to get but the Red Sox 26 and 18 the best record within the division 32 division games left Tampa Bay at 25 and 25 and the Orioles at 23 and 21 even the Yankees they're still in it just six and a half back at 21 and 19 within the division and Mike that's why these head-to-head matchups are so important you're playing the teams now that you're trying to catch head-to-head -head, one win means two games in the standings that's why this is a big weekend for the Orioles it sure does big weekend but big uh, rest of the season I mean two months they have 32 games left within the division it just seems like everybody's beating up on each other so Whatever team gets hot first, I think. Pitching is really what it comes down to. I mean, every team wants that down the stretch. The Orioles have gotten great pitching, you know, lately, so that's a good sign. Offensively, everything really has to be clicking, I think, for teams in the East if they want to win the division. And the Orioles are the only team in the division that Boston has a losing record against. We're coming back to Camden Yards. Lineups and first pitch are next. Baseball on Masson is brought to you by H.H. Gregg. H.H. Gregg, appliances, electronics, furniture, and more. See everything at hhgregg.com. 
Orioles and Red Sox at Camden Yards. It is a gorgeous night for baseball. In fact, how gorgeous. Here's our train game time temperature. Train celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. 78 luscious degrees. The winds out of the southwest at 5 and 58% humidity. We'll take that at this point in the summer any day of the week. So the Red Sox come to town. They're in first place, 61 and 42. Ellsbury, Victorino, and Pedroia with David Ortiz, DH, and Mike Napoli at first base, first season in Boston, and big time power numbers 14 home runs, 63 RBIs. Nava in left, and Salta Lamacchia, Drew, and Iglesias, the youngster at third base, batting ninth. Yeah, take a look at the scouting report tonight for Chris Tillman back on track. So the Orioles finished that road trip up with three consecutive losses. So Chris Tillman wants to start this nine game homestand the right way. And he would love to get lucky number 13. Yeah, his 13th win of the season. The last time an Oriole pitcher did that was back in 2007. That was Eric Bedard. And he has had a quality change. Really the pitch that separated him here recently. Got a great fastball. He gets up at 92 miles an hour. But that change up, he throws off the fastball. Starting to get a lot of swing and misses with it. Take a look at the opponent average at 260. Lefties 246. Righties at 279 against Tillman. So the Orioles are finally back home after beginning the post All-Star break portion of the schedule with a seven game seven day road trip. They went four and three on the trip winning three sweeping Texas and then dropping three out of four in Kansas City. So the Orioles tonight looking to snap a three game losing streak. There's John Farrell in his first season as the Boston manager traded by Toronto to the Red Sox. You don't yeah. often see managers traded but he was. Here's Ellsbury Tillman deals were underway and it's outside. And want to know. Uh, Jacoby Ellsbury, a very important part of this lineup. When he is healthy and he is in there, he is one of the toughest players to get out in the American League. Comes in at 301 and a high fly ball, left center field, chasing Jones out there on the warning track near the bullpen. He makes the catch. Ellsbury gave it a ride. Adam Jones ran it down. And on two pitches, one away in the first. A beautiful play by Gold Glover, Adam Jones. And yeah, he's in center field for the Orioles tonight. McLeod in left, Marcakis over and right. Hardy and Roberts once again up the middle with Machado and Davis on the corners with Matt Wieters doing the catching. Uh, here's Shane Victorino, also his first year with the Red Sox. They really retooled this roster. First, that big trade last year with the Dodgers and then several free agent signings, including Victorino, and there's a strike. They wanted Victorino so badly, they gave him a three year, $39 million contract at the age of 32 in his 10th season. And a slap to left field. McClouth is over and makes the running catch. Oh, McClouth, shallow, able to get to it. So, two quick fly ball outs and two away. Well, Mike, one of the things about this series that is very important for the Red Sox. Equally important to the Orioles. The Orioles are the only team in the division that has a winning record against Boston. Boston has a winning record against every other team. Yeah, take a look at the numbers here. Orioles five wins, Red Sox just two, but every other category, Orioles leading the way, average home runs, runs per game, earned run average. They just play much better against the Red Sox. Really step it up. Now, Red Sox obviously team in first place in the division. They have 12 games left between each other and the Orioles have been playing extremely well and this doesn't go back just this year this really dates back the last few years under Buck Showalter they're 29 and 20 against the Red Sox Dustin Pedroia with his brand new six year extension which makes his current contract now eight years and the pitch taken outside ball two he is just one for his last 21 that covering his last five games Pretty good numbers against Tillman in his career, batting 303 on the season. 2 1 is ripped to left field for a base hit. So that's how you break out of a 1 for 21. You get ahead in the count, look for a fastball, and rip it to left field for a two out single. Whereas he is the spark plug of this Boston team. After he agreed to the extension and it was announced yesterday. There were many in Boston that wondered if he'll be given that captain C that last was worn by Jason Veritek. Well, he should be. I mean, he is a great leader in that Boston Red Sox team. Certainly great for the community, but he is well respected throughout the league for the way he plays the game. He plays it hard when he crosses the lines. He has one thing in mind, and that's to win a ball game. 
Well, a two-out base runner here is David Ortiz. Always a dangerous hitter, and the breaking ball in there for a strike. Here's David Ortiz. He is third in the league in batting at 323, and that's one of the things about Ortiz. Yeah, he's a slugger, but this guy gets his base hits. He is a great overall hitter. I mean, he'll hit his home runs for sure, and that's what, you know, most pitchers are so fearful of, but if you give him a pitch hit the other way, he isn't afraid to pick up his base hits. He beats the shift time and time again, and he has just been a great hitter throughout his whole career. Well, the base hit by Pedroia, a rare first inning hit against Tillman. Opponents have batted 188 against Tillman in first innings on the year, an amazingly low number. So 0 and 1 on Ortiz, two outs, and Pedroia at first. And in the dirt, nice block by Weeders. There's David Ortiz. Here's what he does fastball, he breaks 343, breaking ball 232. And when you throw a changeup to him, that speeds up his bat, which is yeah. already pretty quick. <laughs> 405 sure on the changeup. I mean, he's all over the plate, so uh, he is ready to time a fastball up, and you better not make a mistake with a changeup. You saw the big numbers there. You know, Tillman misses high with that off speed pitch, and it's two and one. Well, Chris coming off a win last Sunday at Texas, he was outstanding. Winning the game that got the Orioles that three game sweep. He and Weeders were in sync all game in that game. Eight strong innings. He allowed only two runs. But Showalter let him begin the ninth inning, and he allowed a home run to Beltre and then was pulled. Too tight to Ortiz with a fastball for a three and one count. David Ortiz, eighth in the league in RBIs with a 65, and he has the best batting average in the American League. Against right handed pitching. He's batting 356 against the righties. Pedroia at first, two down, a three and one on Ortiz. And he walked him. One thing you will notice as you watch these games over the weekend is Boston is a very, very patient team. They lead the major leagues in pitches seen per plate appearance. John Farrell impressed upon them that. If you work the count and see a lot of pitches, you may get into that part of the bullpen that the other team doesn't like to use. Well, exactly. They love to stretch out a starter, try to get him to throw as many pitches as possible. The sooner they can get a starter out, the better in their minds. So Tillman, after two outs, nobody on, has allowed two base runners, and here is Napoli. Fastball's high. I want to know. And Tillman looks like he slipped on the follow through. Well, Tillman in first innings, four earned runs allowed in 20 starts, and that goes in line with that 188 batting average. He has been on some kind of a tear. Eight and one in his last nine starts. So decisions in all nine of those starts, and eight of them winning decisions. One and no on Napoli. Swing and a miss. And they got a fastball by him. That's the thing about Tillman. I mean, they always talk about pitching down, and, and Tillman is so tall, he creates a great downhill angle, but he has success elevating a fastball as well. There's a little extra giddy up on that, and when his secondary pitches are on, he can get away with some fastballs up in the zone. You saw Napoli just could not even catch up to that one. Napoli's got a four game hitting streak working. Tillman paying a lot of attention to Pedroia. Misses outside, ball two. So after getting ahead of Ellsbury and Victorino, fell behind Pedroia, fell behind Ortiz, and now he's two and one on Mike Napoli. Of course, the Red Sox with that patience at the plate, second in all of baseball with 367 walks. Only Oakland has more walks in the majors than Boston. Big pitch, 2 1, it's just outside, ball three. That looked like a little bit of a cutter there. That's a movement, but it missed the corner. Uh, uh, Matt Weeder setting up inside. Pitch was borderline. Could have been called a strike, but I just think the fact that it was so far away from Matt as it cut across the plate, he wasn't able to get the call there. Now, this is a huge pitch for Tillman. He is a pitch away from loading the bases with two down. The shift is on on Napoli. Three infielders on the third base side. And a swing and a miss. Looked like the exact same pitch, but for whatever reason, Napoli that time was enticed to go after it. Yeah, real good fastball. A little movement, too. Take a look at the Nissan pitch track. 91 miles an hour. Now, it's right on the black. And that's how you have to pitch these hitters. 
Well, there's going to be a lot going on here. Tillman against Napoli, three and two with two men down. Pedroia and Ortiz will be off with the pitch. Oriole fans getting behind Tillman, trying to squash out this rally in the first. And the three two is well outside ball four, and he walked them to load the bases. So after two quick outs, a single and back to back walks. And the bases are loaded now, and Weeder's out for a chat with Tillman. Well, one thing about Chris Tillman, I mean, he certainly has had a great year to this point, and he has really matured, I think, as a pitcher, and he has found ways to get himself out of jams. Take a look at this. Verizon Fios inside the numbers shows Chris Tillman's opponent average by month. Now, beautiful trend as it dropped down to 206 in June, but here it shot up a little bit in July, but he still has two wins this month, so he's able to pitch himself out of jams, and that's a great sign of a veteran pitcher knowing how to throw strikes. Pedroia Ortiz, Napoli third to first, and here is Daniel Nava, the number six batter in the lineup, switch hitter up there from the left side. And there's a strike right at him on one. Nava's one of those guys that, for whatever reason, whenever he plays the Orioles, he does something. Take a look at his career with the bases loaded, uh, 381. He does have a grand slam with 19 RBIs, so likes these types of situations. He's got a modest two-game hitting streak working. And a big chance for Boston here in the first inning. And time requested at the plate. Laz Diaz pointed to Weeders. So it was the catcher requesting that time. Friday night game. So the Orioles have on the alternate black jerseys. That they wear home or road on Friday nights. <laughs> oh, and one on Nava. Bases loaded and two down. Breaking ball for a strike. Now that's a real good combination. Fastball to get ahead. Nava was taking. Surprised him with a breaking pitch. Yeah, beautiful off-speed pitch there for a quality strike to get well ahead, especially with the bases loaded here. Now he can work the perimeter, hope for some so soft contact or maybe a chase, swing and miss. All right, you get ahead with strikes, you get them out with balls. Let's see how they at attack Daniel Nava with the bases loaded and two down. Tillman working from the stretch. And the 0-2 swung out and missed. He got him. So Tillman gets out of the jam he created on his own after a single and back-to-back -back walk. So Nava strikes out. Boston misses a big chance. They'll leave the bases loaded. Red Sox fail to score. We go to the bottom of the first. And here come the birds. The first big crowd continues to file in here tonight. 
as the Orioles and Sox get it going over the weekend. He's going to look at the Orioles lineup for tonight. Nate McLeod with Manny Machado in the number two spot. Manny still above 300, although he has cooled off. 301, eight home runs, 48 RBIs. Marquez in right, then Adam Jones, Chris Davis, Matt Wieters, J.J. Hardy, Henry Arudia playing his first home game, and Brian Roberts at second base batting ninth. And take a look at John Lackey's scouting report. He has been stepping it up. Two runs or less in six of his last seven starts. He does have a great veteran mix of fastball, slider, curve, and change, but it is his go to slider that you're going to see a lot of in this ball game. His speed varies from 84 to 90 miles an hour with that pitch. And take a look at his numbers on the year 2.95 earned run average. McLeod fouls it off down the left side. That's going to make its way back into the crowd. So. And falls back on the field. So the count nothing and two on Nate. As they converge, Iglesias, Drew, and Daniel Nava. Nate went 10 for 28 on the road trip. He was 8 for 16 in the first four games and then 2 for 12 in the last three games. A lot of bats kind of cooled off yep. their last few games there against Kansas City. I'm hoping they can get him back on track here in this series. And Lackey goes right at him and gets him on three pitches. So McLeod strikes out, one away in the Oriole first. Take a look at the Red Sox defense behind Lackey, Nava in left field, Ellsbury in center, Victorino over at right, Drew and Pedroia up the middle, and Glacius at third base, Napoli over at first base, and Salta La Macchia doing the catch. Uh, here is Manny. He is at 301 with those eight home runs and 48 RBIs. And he continues to lead the league in doubles despite the fact he has gone 66 at bats since his last double. Kind of an amazing trend the opposite way as Lackey just misses outside and one on one the count. But Show Walters Club back home for the first time in nearly two weeks. And a bouncer foul and one and two. Well, Manny against the Boston Red Sox, they certainly. Uh, are aware of his presence 438 average in the seven games with a home run and six RBIs and five of his 39 doubles against Boston. Yeah, he has some great numbers against a lot of teams, but real big ones obviously against the Red Sox. John Lackey now 34 years old. He is back from Tommy John surgery missed all of last year rehabbing from that. He has 105 major league wins. Two and two on Machado. Breaking ball's a little low, ball three. Manny had five hits, including a home run on the road trip. He has worked the count full three and two with one out, nobody on. And a high pop-up right side of the infield. Pedroia calls. And two down in the Oriole first inning. Well, we talk about John Lackey's veteran mix, and here it is. His last 12 starts, this is his pitch usage, 56.4% with the fastball. Now, he can throw a two-seamer off that opponent batting average of 255, but it's his slider that's his go-to pitch, 216 batting average, 28.3% of the time he'll throw that, and a big breaking ball to go along with it, and that occasional breaking or uh, change-up. Remember, Verizon Fios making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable Internet. That's powerful. And Nick Marcakis takes inside 1 0. Nick seems like he's on the verge of really breaking out, just busting out of it. He does have a four game hitting streak going, but he has not been driving in runs. He is 7 for 17 during the streak. His RBI is hovering at 44. He has just two RBIs in his last 23 games, covering 90 at bats. Now, not all of that is Nick. There's got to be somebody on to drive in. Jim Presley works with him day in and day out on the, on the mechanics of the swing. But batting number three in the lineup, you look for run production. And the Orioles know that he is, uh, without a doubt, capable. And the one thing he does, it, you know, you look at his hits by direction. And he does a fabulous job of moving the ball around. Yeah, well, there aren't many guys that put together quality at bats like Nick Markakis does. And he does have the ability to drive in runs. I think this is just a spell for him. <laughs> Beautiful piece of hitting there. <laughs> there you go. It's by direction. He goes the opposite way. 
He's been watching your Rudia for the last week. So two out single. Now take a look at the swing from Nick Marquez because what he's so good at is pulling his hands inside the baseball. That's a tough pitch actually moving down and in on him. But he pulls those hands tight to his body. That bat head drags behind. He shoots it to left field. So Nick talking with Mike Napoli. So Adam Jones will get in that bat with a man on. Adam at 292. He has slipped out of the top 10 in batting. 20 home runs and he is fifth with those 71 RBIs. Delay at the plate. Salta Lamaki had some trouble with his mask, so now he's set to go. Lackey has allowed 14 home runs in his 17 starts, and he has 11 quality starts in his 17 starts. In the dirt, nice block by Salta Lamaki. Well, they needed Lackey to bounce back. Of course, last year took the whole year off recovering from Tommy John surgery, so. To get back in the, and help this rotation out, and now with the loss of Buckholtz, who's been on the DL for a while, Lackey has certainly been the guy to really step up and help uh, help the manager John Farrell out. And Lackey got off to a real slow start this year. In his first five starts, he was one and four, but he has gone six and three since then over his last 12 starts, and he's four and two in his last nine. Borderline pitch. Lackey gets the call and one him on the count. Well, that's that go-to slider right there. 87 miles an hour with that type of movement on it. Pretty impressive pitch. We look at Adam Jones batting average versus pitch type. Fastball is at 323. Breaking ball 291. Do not make a mistake with that pitch. High fly ball, right field. He got a lot of it. Back it goes. It is gone. It just got out. Jones goes the opposite way, and the Orioles break on top. Mike, that breaking ball he laid off, set up for the swing. He sensed he was being worked away, and he went with it. He sure did go with it. I mean, this is a fastball. It was a mistake up in the zone, and Adam Jones just hammered this pitch. He straight back legged it, stayed behind it so well. And I think you're right. It was the patience, thinking about the breaking ball being away, kept him behind that ball really well. And Chris Davis takes a strike. Chris is also a hitter that you expect is going to break out. He's having too good of a year, does not have a home run since the All-Star break. Now, it's only seven games and 30 at-bats, but he set a pace for himself that even he can't keep up with. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. I mean, what a torrid first half. It's going to be hard to keep up with that, but they would love to see consistency because he really stabilizes this offense in the heart of the order. Chris still leads the league with 37 home runs, 97 RBIs is most. There's a ball hit through the shift and a base hit in the right field. So three good signs here in the first inning. Three very important Oriole batters all with hits. Marcakis, Jones, and now Davis. Well, the Orioles offense able to capitalize with two outs. Unlike the Red Sox in the first inning, quick two outs and then loading the bases. But Tillman pitching out of that jam. The Orioles offense staying hot here. Big home run and now Chris Davis with the single. Adam Jones with the two run home run to get the Orioles on top. Of course the Orioles have homered in all the 22 games on the year. Walking with Manny Machado there Manny saying how'd you hit one out that way. You're a pull <laughs> hitter. Not when they pitch you like that and you go with the pitch. Matt Wieters now breaking ball is outside one to know Mike. A lot of patience here in these at bats in the first inning against Lackey. Well, it's a good sign. Obviously, uh, the Orioles know what's at stake. This is going to be one of those series where really mistakes, who makes the fewest amount of mistakes and who's able to capitalize on the mistakes that are made. Lackey made the mistake to Adam Jones and he capitalized on that one. Well, Davis takes his lead. And the 2 0 is bounced foul. Well, since the All Star break, Matt Wieters has been red hot. And here's the comparison with his battery 
counterpart tonight, Salta Lamacchia. Look at Weeders, 480 since the break. Salta Lamacchia, 167, two home runs and four RBIs. Salta Lamacchia is still looking for his first. Yeah, Matt Weeders is a great second half player, and the Orioles love that. In a good position, and Matt Weeders' bat heating up like it typically does at the halfway point. Look for it to carry on through September. Well, and how do you put up gaudy numbers like that? How about five consecutive multi hit games coming into tonight? Yeah, there you go. Nice crowd on hand on this Friday night. And a 2 nothing Oreo lead in the first. Davis at first with two down. And Weeders with a real good cut fouled it back. Lackey, the 15th home run he's allowed now, nine by right handed batters and six to left handed batters. He is one and three in the AL East this year, and his one win was here at Camden Yards on June 15th. He went seven strong innings. He allowed two runs on seven hits, and Boston held on and won at 5 4. That was the only game in that series that the Red Sox were able to win. Davis with a small lead off first and the 2 2 is fouled off. The readers about to see the seventh pitch in this at bat. As the Orioles are really making lackey work. He is already up to 26 pitches. Our show Walter saying before the game it was just simply good to be home. Two and two on Weeders. And a foul tip and it went in and out of the glove of Salta Lamacchia. Weeders has life. And good job just making contact with that pitch. Great location. 92 mile an hour fastball up and in. Just gets enough of it to stay alive. You see the nice crowd here at Camden Yards. Only seven pitches now for Lackey, who is very much a strikeout pitcher. Just outside, ball three. Well, this will give the Orioles a break now. John Farrell anxiously looking on. He's telling his first baseman Napoli play behind the runner. Davis will be off with the pitch. Three and two and two men down. So with the lefty batter up, Farrell wants Napoli in fielding position behind the runner. And as Weeders tries to prolong this at bat. This will be the ninth pitch coming up to Matt Weeders in this at bat. Davis runs and the pitch is fouled off right behind Wayne Kirby. With that slider Lackey throws and he throws it enough that there really isn't a such thing as a fastball count with John Lackey. A lot of pride in that pitch and, and he'll throw it in any any count. Like there you just saw it in a 3-2 count to Mount Weeders. You saw Adam Jones cheering on for his teammate. Davis goes on the 3 2, swinging a high fly ball to left. Back on it goes Nava, appears to have a play in the corner. He does, and he makes the catch. And the inning is over. Orioles break on top, a two out single by Marcakis. And Adam Jones goes the opposite way, his 21st home run. will head to the second, 2 0 O's.
here at Camden Yards with Orioles outfielder Nick Marcakis. It benefits critically ill children. Visit CaseyCares5K.org. All well, the charities very fond of Nick and Christina Marcakis. They're not, they not only lend their name to it, they're right there involved. They sure are. I mean, so many of the Baltimore players are actively involved in community affairs, so uh, it's great to see, and it's great to see that the players care so much. Well, what a turnaround in the first inning as Tillman loaded the bases with two men down. That got Nava on a strikeout. And then after two down and nobody on, his team got him the lead. So the lower third of the lineup here in the second. It'll be Salta La Machia, then Stephen Drew and Jose Iglesias. Salta La Machia, 259 on the year, and Tillman gets ahead of him. Tillman looking for his 13th win. He has 13 quality starts in his 20 starts. Check swing and on the appeal, he did not go. There's Mike Winters at third base tonight. First of three against Boston this weekend. Breaking ball for a strike. That was the pitch in Texas that was critical to his success. He didn't throw it a lot. But when he did, he threw it for strikes and surprised the hitters. I'm telling you, if he can throw that breaking ball for strikes, he becomes very dangerous. And he's throwing two in this ball game, both for strikes. Lifted to left. McClouth is there and one down in the Boston second inning. Let's get a look at our AT&T Mobility Trivia Fact. Chris Tillman, one of nine pitchers in the major leagues with at least five wins at home and at least five wins on the road this season. Now, if he wins this game, he will join Max Scherzer and Matt Moore with six wins at home and six on the road. Only three will have done that if Chris wins here tonight. Pretty impressive. Chris Tillman has been so solid for the Orioles since he got called up actually last year after the midway point. Just been one of the most consistent right-handed starters in the game. Tillman 28 and 21 now in his career as he misses to Stephen Drew. In his first season with Boston is their shortstop. Drew now 30 years old. He's in his eighth season, a former first round pick of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Outside, ball three. The problem with Drew has been staying healthy. And on the DL four times in his career. A couple of the major injuries. There's a strike taken all the way, three and one. And a liner to left field. That'll hang from a clout right where he had him played. He makes the catch. And two men down here in the second inning. Well, fans, the Orioles and Red Sox continue this key three-game weekend series tomorrow and Sunday at Oriole Park. So come on out and help us paint the ballpark orange as the Birds battle the Sox for the AL East crown. Good seats remain for each game, but they're going fast. So back your birds and spend your weekend with family and friends here at Camden Yards. For your tickets, 888 for a bird or if you prefer, just go online at Orioles.com. Fastball high to Iglesias, and it's 1-0. Oh. I would expect that sometime over the next few days, Jose Iglesias and Henry Arrudia will try to get together and shake hands, each defecting from Cuba. And there's a fly ball to the right to Marquecas, and a three-up, three-down inning. We're left to the bottom of the second, where Camden Yards and the Orioles have the lead.
Dallas of Baltimore. Mary has already won $500 by being selected and will win $100 more for every Orioles hit during the game tonight, plus an extra $500 for any Orioles home run hit in the fifth inning. For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery hit at big contestant of the game, play five-card cash. Go to mdlottery.com slash Orioles to enter. So good luck to Mary. Already three base hits in the game for Mary. J.J. Hardy takes ball one. Rudy and Roberts will follow. Lifted to left field, charging in his knob. It'll hang. He makes the catch. And one down as Hardy is retired. Now, this will be a special moment here at Camden Yards. Here is Henry Arudia's first full mat bat as a member of the Orioles. Called up in Texas as the post All Star break portion of the schedule resumed last Friday night. And for the moment, he is your pretty much everyday DH. And he's gotten off to a great start. Certainly showing he can handle the bat pretty well. And he's certainly not overmatched at all. See the hits by direction there. Five to left field. And two to right. So he's learning from Marcakis, even though this is the first week he's seen Marcakis play. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Go with the pitch, young man. Swings through it, one and two. John Lackey out of Abilene, Texas. He was a second round pick of the Angels when he came into pro ball back in 1999. Rudy of the other way, but right to Iglesias at third. Henry's retired for the second out. Fans, today's Masson word of the day is caution. Text caution to 29292 for your chance to win a three day family four pack of tickets to the Baltimore Grand Prix presented by SRT. Stay tuned all week long for more chances to win with Masson. Now, in an auto race, the caution's not good, right? That's when they make you slow down. Right? Yeah. Caution. And Brian Roberts, the Orioles' number nine batter, whose bat is really heating up. A look over strike one. Henry Arudia after the bounce out. Chopper glove by Lackey. What a play. Just took a base hit away from Roberts. And Lackey with a big bounce back inning. Three up and three down. We're through two at Camden Yards. The Orioles have the lead. Blimpy. Get the most for your money with Blimpy $5 deals. Choose from four of your Blimpy favorites. Blimpy, America Sub Shop. Fans on the concourse at Camden Yards. The concourse is empty because the fans are in their seats. <laughs> Watching Chris Tillman go to work against the Boston Red Sox. Orioles with a 2 0 lead on the Adam Jones home run. 
Chris Tillman now in his fifth season, and he is emerging as a top of the rotation starter. And tonight, the Orioles are asking him to be the stopper, trying to snap a three game losing streak. Here's Ellsbury for his second at bat. He flied out to Jones near the warning track in front of the Orioles' bullpen, leading off the game. And strike one. Emory Arruti already working on his bat for his next at bat. See, when you're the DH, you got to keep yourself occupied. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That last pitch got in on him a little too much. Had to get some new lumber. And he's got the team color theme going there with yeah. the orange tape. Ellsbury will be a free agent after this year. There's Henry with Ryan Flaherty right behind him. No. What kind of tape is that? that? That almost looks like it's orange electrical tape. Yeah, it's got a little <laughs> cushion to it. It's a little spongier. Easier on the hands. Oh, what a change up. Tillman gets Ellsbury. There's a second strikeout and one away. This is a great change from Chris Tillman. Take a look at the Nissan pitch track. Great arm speed, and that ball just drops off. The table at the end. Beautiful pitch from Chris Tillman. That was such a good pitch. He's talking to himself. Yeah. Here's Victorino, the flying Hawaiian, and he takes a strike. He's had a real interesting career. Born in Hawaii, now in his tenth season. He was drafted by the Dodgers in '99. Then he was. Taken in the Rule 5 draft by the Padres. That was for 2003, but he only lasted with the Padres until May and then was sent back to the Dodgers. Then for the 05 season, the Phillies took him in the Rule 5 draft. So he was Rule 5 twice and then had a real nice career going with the Phillies as he swings through it until he was traded to the Dodgers last year. And then this past offseason signed that big $39 million deal for John Farrell and the Red Sox. But what the Red Sox liked about Victorino, he's a switch hitter. He plays all three outfield positions. Sure. And the one two is hit towards shortstop. All reliable Mr. Hardy is there and two down in the Boston third. And Tillman has retired six in a row. Get on board during the playoff chase. Pick up the Birdland Summer Six Pack. You'll get a ticket to six games of your choice throughout the remainder of the season. And it includes two against either the Yankees or the Red Sox and all for one low price. You'll pay those non-prime prices for the prime games that you don't want to miss. So lock up those seats now as the pennant race heats up. 888-848-BIRD or get online at Orioles.com. Here is Dustin Pedroia, his second at bat. Down and away. Pedroia with a single in the first inning. After two outs and nobody on. That is the only base hit allowed by Tillman through two and two thirds. Chris Tillman trying to become a 13 game winner and the Orioles' first 13 game winner since 2007. And the last 13 game winner for the Orioles. Was the player that Chris Tillman was traded for, yeah. Eric Bedard? Exactly. And the trade came the offseason following that 13 win season for Bedard in 2007. It all falls right into place. <laughs> 1 2 to Pedroia, slap foul. Pedroia will turn 30 in August in his eighth season. And he was asked yesterday if he's pleased with this extension that he'll be able to finish his career in Boston. He said, what do you mean finish the career? I'm going to get a new contract after this contract. <laughs> so what? I'll be 38. Right to Davis at first, protecting the outside corner. And Tillman has his second consecutive three up, three down inning. We'll head to the bottom of the third at Camden Yards. Birds lead it 2-0.
Continue to bring any non-perishable food items or cash donations to help support the Orioles Reach Food and Funds Drive. The Orioles Wives, Orioles Advocates, and WJZ TV personalities and Mike Bordick were at the gates tonight collecting your donations, benefiting the Maryland Food Bank. The drive continues tomorrow and Sunday. For all the details, OriolesReach.com as Nate McLeod takes it to right center field and deep. Back that ball goes on the warning track and off the glove of Jacoby Ellsbury. McLeod is sticking three. He's around second heading to third, and he has a leadoff triple. Well, McLeod going after that first pitch, and he nearly hit it out. Ellsbury got to it, Mike, but right off the glove for a triple. Yeah, great swing by Nate McLeod, but there was some miscommunication out there. Both outfielders kind of checking each other out. You see their heads go down. I think Ellsbury just kind of felt uncomfortable with Victorino closing in on him right off the end of the glove. You see Lackey. Oh, what's going on out there? Got the fly ball. Couldn't get the out. Showing a little frustration. Well, what you have out there, Mike, is you have a right fielder who's accustomed to playing center field and getting anything that he can get to. Except he's not the center fielder anymore. Here's Machado. Fastball's too tight. Want to know. Manny popped up his first at bat. Chance for an RBI here. Boston with the infield back, except for Iglesias at third and Napoli at first. Down and away, ball two. I've noticed Lackey staring in at Laz Diaz. He he does not seem to be in agreement with the strike zone early on here. He he hasn't said much, but when he doesn't get a call that he obviously thinks he should, he just stares at Diaz. Yeah, there's some body language going on out there from Lackey. Now we saw it obviously uh, towards his outfielders, but now towards Laz Diaz behind the plate. Laz, a veteran umpire. Two of the Manny's in the dirt, knocked down by Salta Lamaki to save a wild pitch. And three and 0 the count. Very impressed with the Orioles' approach here against Lackey. Nate McLeod with the triple, so he is one out of two in the game with his fourth triple on the year. Machado trying to get him in. And Lackey unsure of the pitch he agreed to throw, he steps off. Well, you certainly better make sure because 3 0 is a green light in the American League East. Everybody wants to swing, could be the only good pitch you get. Oh, man, he guessed in there. He didn't get the fastball. No, he got a good slider. Pretty good pitch down and away. And he now one for his last 11. And one for his last 17 over a longer stretch. Strike. He thought he had ball four. Pretty good pitch here from Lackey. Take a look at the Nissan pitch track. He just dots a fastball in the inside corner. Actually, pitch track shows it inside a little bit there. Las Diaz helping him out. Well, Salta Lamacchia framed it. He hit the glove and didn't move the glove. Got the call. 3 2 is fouled in and out of the glove of the catcher. Lackey averages eight and a half strikeouts per nine innings, so he's almost up there at a, a K per inning. And the other thing he usually doesn't do, Mike, is hurt himself with walks. He's walked only 23 all year, less than two per game. Manny Machado, man on third, less than two out. They have scored 12 of 24 times in these situations. And three and 0 to three and two. Ground ball through the middle, base hit for Machado. Manny comes through and it's 3 nothing O's. What a nice easy swing that was just a ground ball through the box. Well it really was quite an at bat right there from Manny Machado working count to 3 2. This puts out over the plate but he just finds a way and shoots it up the middle picking up a big RBI. Nice pitch away from Machado but not trying to do too much with it stays hard to the middle. Helps himself out and the team. Well, McLeod talking it over with Chris Davis. Nate went after the first pitch for the triple. And here is Marquez. And 
Fastball is a called strike and it's 0 1. Now, one of the things that you would expect as this game goes on, the Orioles to try is to try to steal on John Lackey. He has had just a, a tough, tough time with base runners on the year. Machado does have six steals. He has been caught five times. Ground ball to first. That's fair. Out at first. Throw to second is high. The slide. He is safe at second base. The tag had to be applied because Napoli stepped on the bag and Machado hustled and he beat the tag of Stephen Drew. And Machado, of course, being as tall as he is, Napoli, hard time creating a lane, so has to throw the ball high here. See the shot. He just steps on it and stays right in the line instead of creating that throwing lane for himself. Has to throw high, and you see Drew jumping up. Machado just aggressive right into the base in there safely. So with one down, another runner in scoring position. Here's Adam Jones. Adam hit his 21st home run in the first to get the Orioles on the board. And now a 3-0 lead. Breaking ball is low, 1-0. Oh. So Adam with the two-run home run. He now has 18 multi-RBI games on the year and 73 ribbies for the season. So an RBI opportunity with... Machado out there. Too tight. Adam last year had 82 RBIs. Well, he is certainly uh, sure to shatter that this year. And Lackey already had 50 pitches. Jones ahead 2 and 0. Oh. Bouncer towards third. Iglesias plays the hop. Looks Machado back. Adams retired for the second out. And two down here in the Oriole third. Let's get a look at our Chevrolet League leaders brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Extra base hits in the American League on the year. And these two teams, Mike, at the top. The Red Sox at 354, and the Orioles right on them with 350. Yeah, big numbers there, obviously. But look at the American League. Average at 295, so these teams are some serious sluggers leading the way. So here is Chris Davis, an RBI chance. High fly ball, right center field off the end of the bat. Who's it going to be? Ellsbury calls off Victorino and he makes the catch, and the inning ends. But the Orioles do get a run. McLeod with the leadoff triple, Machado the RBI single, Tillman going back to work with a 3 0 lead. Back home, Henry Arudia, his first Oriole Park game. David Ortiz, Brian Roberts, renewed acquaintances. Big first inning jam as Tillman pitched out of it. And then Adam Jones going with the pitch the opposite way. 
almost reached the flag guard and fell down on top of the scoreboard. Then McLeod with a triple. Lackey upset with that. Nate would score. And the Orioles with a 3 0 lead. And with McLeod, Mike, when the Orioles score a run coming into this game, when McLeod scores, the Birds are 26 and 13. And he has scored here tonight. I, I like the, the karma yeah, there. Definitely a good sign for the Orioles. And you also like the karma when this guy's on the mound, pitching as he is. Seven in a row retired by Tillman. Just loading the bases with two down in the first. And a bloop. Machado towards the foul line, runs it down. Oh, he was sawed off. So Ortiz, a very easy out and one away. A really good pitch there from Chris Tillman. Big breaking ball first pitch. It looked good to Ortiz, but it just got in on him. Late break. Easy pop up to Manny Machado. Tillman has struck out two. He has walked two. Here's Mike Napoli drew a walk with two down, which loaded the bases in the first. So the Orioles playing a big shift on Napoli. One thing in his mind, that's trying to hit as hard as he can. Certainly on the pull side. Down and away, lays off the breaking pitch, one and one. Eight in a row retired by Chris since he walked Napoli to load the bases in the first. And a little low. There's Tillman's approach now, Mike. You see he's very quiet on the mound. He worked very hard last year, Rick Adair in spring training, and then when he went down to AAA, working with Mike Griffin and Rick Peterson, the delivery of the follow-through is very consistent, very calm. It's a high fastball by Napoli. It is 92 miles an hour, and that's just got a little extra life on top. And you're exactly right. One of the keys for Chris Tillman, I think, as a younger pitcher, was just having a consistent delivery. And with the help of pitching coach Rick Adair, just saw him there. They really ironed it out and made it more consistent. You see, he starts from the stretch, just one quick step, and off he goes. Really able to repeat it time and time again. Another good fastball, notched it up to 93 there. Take a look at the pitch track. Two fastballs up in the zone that Napoli just can't get to. A little extra life. 93, zoop. There it goes. Well, number three for Tillman, who averages seven per game. And two and one in his career against Boston. One of those wins came this year, June 14th. When he pitched six shutout innings and only left the game because the pitch count got him. He was at 106 through six innings, so Buck Showalter made the change. There's a fastball taken for a strike, one and one. Daniel Nava switch hitter. He struck out with the bases loaded and the first. Check swing and it's high. There's one of the things that Tillman has done. He has brought stability to the rotation. We've been talking about the Orioles starters and the difficulty they've had consistently going seven innings on the year just 18 times in 103 games. But if you look at Tillman, Mike, he has five of the 18 going in these seven innings. Yeah, he is certainly uh, slowly but surely becoming the Orioles' uh, ace. I think of the staff, most dependable, gets deeper in the ball games. Really stepped up and you know finds ways to win ball win ball games when he doesn't have his best stuff. So great sign for the or Orioles in their uh, rotation. This is low with a changeup for ball three. Daniel Nava, two game hitting streak going. He has become a real key player for the Red Sox. Another switch hitter. Plays in the outfield. 
and began his professional career in independent baseball in California. High ball four, and he works a two-out walk. Here we have the third walk. Well, the Orioles, as they begin this homestand, they're trying to get back on a winning track. Here's how that road trip went post All-Star break. Won the first four, three in a row for the sweep in Texas in the first game in Kansas City. But then the Royals came back and won the last three nights, and you can see it's very clear why. 333 batting average in the wins, 214 in the losses. Runs per game way down. Average with runners in scoring position considerably down. The ERA was way up, and the opponent batting average was up. So the Orioles are trying to get that consistency back and hoping on this nine-game homestand they'll find it. And a 3-0 lead here in the fourth. Salta Lamacchia fouls it off. Didn't mean to swing. Well, you know the ingredients are there, obviously, for them to stay, find that consistency like you were talking about. It would be great if they had starting pitching and the offense and the whole plan and defense all working hand in hand together. I mean, they would easily be the best team in baseball. I just think they have too many potent weapons um, all over the field. But to get them to work together, you know, a lot of teams struggle with that, trying to find that type of consistency. The Orioles have to know here down the stretch those sub 500 teams can potentially be the most dangerous teams as they look for their goal to make it into the postseason. So every game certainly has to be played at a high level and can be looking ahead at series taking any pitches off. Big shift on against Salta Lamakia. Down and in nearly hit him. He's played by Weeders there. Salta Lamakia, his name fills out his jersey. It wraps all the way around his number. You think he has enough uh, letters? <laughs> I'm going to tuck his name into more, his pants. More letters in a last name than any other player in the major leagues. And he already was a league leader when he showed up with his major league uniform <laughs> by virtue of his birth. Yes. He's the only player who I can't fit his first name and his last name on the same line on my scorecard. I have to cheat a little bit. Zillman's just trying to get him out to end the inning. Two and two with two down. And Nava at first. And foul off his foot that rolls out towards the mound. Was Tillman a second round pick of Seattle in 2006 and then following that 2007 season was included as one of the players for Eric Bedard and Andy McFowl pulling off that five for one trade and what a five for one it was because two of the players are now all stars for the Orioles. Now Buck talks about it all the time Mike about how the organization is as good as the players that the people that you never see and that's the scouts and the scouts are out there right now the trading deadline is next week the Orioles have already made two trades and there's every reason to believe if something is presented to Dan Duquette that will make this team better they'll make the move. Well, I certainly think you have to think that because they have been aggressive already this month acquiring Feldman and of course uh, Francisco Rodriguez so a lot of you know obviously positive moves. They see an opening here. I mean, the Orioles have put themselves in a great position once again. 2-2 two, two is high, ball three. They have some great pieces in place right now. I mean, offensively, one of the best offensive teams in the game. Their bullpen is obviously more stable, and their starting rotation, you would mention it. They're just, you know, getting better and better, I think, as the season progresses. So a lot of positive signs, but if you can add one or two Pieces certainly help the team get over the hump and into the postseason and try to reach that ultimate goal, obviously, of hoisting that World Series trophy. And the 3 2 is pulled foul. But for the time being, the Orioles are going with an eight man bullpen and a three man bench, although I, I found it interesting that Buck went out of his way today during his pregame media session to remind everybody that Steve Pierce today played for Gulf Coast. So he is beginning his comeback with the sore wrist. He's on the disabled list. Pierce could be a key because he presents a, a right handed potent bat with home run power. 
three and two with two down. Nava is off with the pitch. And another foul back. Because that is uh, one area where the Orioles know that they can improve on. They're hoping Urudia will do that. But their, their DH numbers have not been very good on the year. It's probably been the most inconsistent of the Orioles hitting on the season. When you break it down to whatever the splits you want to go for. Another 3 2. Swung on and missed. He got him. The Tillman comes back to get Salta Lamaki at two Ks in the inning, a two out walk. Bottom of the fourth coming up with the birds in front. Jonathan Stope last night had a dream game in a rehab game at Aberdeen. How about four for five with two home runs and seven RBIs? He hit a grand slam. He had a three run home run and he set the Ironbirds single season club record for RBIs. He played so well last night. He's back at Triple A and in the Norfolk lineup tonight. So far, 0 for 1. And Matt Marullo, the manager there, in his report to Buck Showalter, kind of played around and said, hey, can you keep me here a couple of days? <laughs> He's tearing up the New York Penn League. I bet a great example, too, for some of the younger players there in Aberdeen to see Jonathan Scope, a young player himself, who's really learned how to work the right way towards his goals. And uh, so I'm sure a lot of those younger players that were around him were impressed with his work habits. And, and now off to Norfolk, Come back for another opportunity, a shot hopefully at the Orioles. Yeah, the uh, the inopportune stress fracture in his back following the WBC curtailed his season, but uh, he is more than on the radar for the Orioles. Another player Buck mentioned today was LJ Hose. He said, don't forget about LJ. Readers rips it, but foul. And you know, the, the other thing too, Mike, and you being involved with the player development in the organization, and uh, they're running out to see if Lackey's hurt. After that pitch, somebody noticed something. Rolled his ankle a little bit, I think, on the delivery. On Farrell making sure. Take a look here. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. Says he's okay. Seems to be. Well, he's a gamer. They seem convinced he's okay. And Lackey will go back to work on Weeders with a count of two and two. He's a big guy, six feet, six inches tall. Three nothing O's were in the fourth. Weeders to left field off the end of the bat. Nava towards the line has a play. And one down. So one away here in the fourth. But to finish the thought on the minor leagues, the Orioles farm system now. 
is so much deeper than it's been in years. When Dan Duquette goes to other teams to discuss trades, there are players in the system that other teams covet. And that is a real good thing to have if you're Buck Showalter and you're looking for a piece. If you have parts of what might be somebody else's future, that's fine because it's all about this team and winning here. Well, you're exactly right, Jim. I mean, there are some really good players. And, of course, since Dan Duquette came over, started, you know, really rebuilding the minor leagues, adding depth to it so that they could have opportunities to make some trades, and they've already done that. This year, of course, uh, Jake Arrieta going to the Cubs along with Pedro Strope, but um, the big trade they just made with Nick Delmonico, who's mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the top prospects for the Orioles uh, to get right there, Francisco Rodriguez. So there are opportunities, and I think the Orioles really had a great plan when Duquette and Buck Showalter came aboard of how they wanted to restructure or this organization so that they potentially would have these opportunities and be able to take advantage of it. Two and one the count on Hardy. Now that was a real interesting shot we just saw that Francisco is hanging out on the bench and I thought I saw Jim Johnson there with him. Too early for those guys to be out in the bullpen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're back end guys. They can watch the game from here and, and then go out to the bullpen. And Hardy has worked a one out walk. Well, the Mid Atlantic Sports Report is back on Monday, 5 until 7 on Masson. You can join Tom Davis, Dave Johnson, Mel Anton, and Phil Wood. They'll recap this weekend series against the Red Sox and look ahead to the upcoming week as the Astros and Mariners will come to Camden Yards next week. They'll also have all the latest news and the rumors from around MLB as that trade deadline gets closer and closer. Mid Atlantic Sports Report, 5 until 7, returning on Monday on Masson. First walk allowed by Lackey, and here is Henry Yerudia. Now, the Orioles did not take batting practice on the field today because of their very late or early arrival, depending on your perspective. I'm sure many of the traveling party were fortunate to get to bed by 5 a.m., so Buck said no BP, just report ready to play. And as Yerudia fouls it off. And I'm, I'm just curious, Yerudia playing here at Camden Yards for the first time as he looks out to the scoreboard in right field and how inviting that target for a left-handed batter seems. <laughs> right. Even though he has proven to be a, an opposite field hitter so far, go with the pitch hitter. One on one the count. And he fouls it off. John Lackey's trying to win his eighth. And beat the Orioles for a second time this year. That pitch count pretty high already. 65 in the fourth inning. One on, one out, three nothing O's. Good take. Henry Arudia, Mike, is a really nice kid. The lone Sambo is still here. He uh, was with him all throughout the minor leagues, acting as his interpreter, helping him out get adjusted to professional baseball. But he's uh, very aware. Buck Showalter says one of the things that he looks for with new players, does he laugh? And a ball hit towards the hole, and he did it again. A base hit the other way. That one squirted in there past the dive of Iglesias. He's going to make Tony Gwynn proud if there's a one-out single. Yeah, he loves that hole over there. You watch how he stays inside this. This ball kind of getting in on him, and he fights it off. And once again, we talk about Nick Markakis all the time, the ability to pull his hands inside. You see Lackey once again showing the frustration as that ball finds a hole over there on the left side. I don't know who he was yelling at there, but if he's yelling at Iglesias, I think I'd take exception to that from Iglesias. Yeah. Wow. He screamed at the ball off the glove of Ellsbury, and he screamed at that ball that got through. So here's Brian Roberts, Orioles with a chance to add on here. First and second and one down. B-Rob was robbed of a base hit by Lackey, and he'll take ball one. That was in his first at-bat in the second inning. One for three with runners in scoring position. That base hit was by... Machado to get McLaughlin 
Boston 0 for just one. They also have a walk. And a strike taken by B-Rob. B-Rob, which is one of the good signs for the Orioles, he is playing now his 22nd consecutive game since coming off the DL. And there was some thought that Buck Showalter might ease him in, day off here, day off there. You're in the lineup. That's right. right. O'Brien prepared himself for this anyway. I mean, he re worked really hard, and he has been. An unfortunate injury there at the beginning of the season with his hamstring, and then obviously resulting in surgery. O'Brien uh, certainly with the right work ethic and was prepared to come out here and play every day. This is the critical time of the year. Every game is so important. And you go with the regular lineup you feel gives yourself the best chance to win. And right now, Brian Roberts at second base, in Buck Showalter's mind, gives this team the best chance to win. Now, Flaherty and Cassie are still here. They're not seeing a lot of time on the field. But they are here, and they are part of this club. There's Alexi. Who has become very good friends with Henry Rudia since Henry joined the team. Yeah. Well, Brian Roberts does have the great ability to put together some really good at bats. There's a look at Ryan Flaherty, obviously wanting some more play in time, but Roberts, he, he, he can work a pitcher, can work the count into a hitter friendly count. Bouncer towards the hole, base hit right field. Hardy got a late start. He's being sent. Here's the throw from Victorino, the slide. He is out at the plate on a nice sweep tag by Salta Lamacchia. So Hardy is gunned down for the second out on a perfect throw from Victorino to get him. Two men down. Uh, Victorino kind of shortening up over there in right field. And he closed the distance quickly. Look at how aggressively he's coming in after this ball. Good one time throw. The hop up the line a little bit. Salta Lamaki with a nice tag right on J.J. Hardy's back. See how close Victorino is to the infield. Really aggressive there. And JJ just unable to get his hand in. Salta Lamakia with that tag on the shoulder. So Dickerson sent him because it took a perfect throw, and that's exactly what it was. Yerudia made it to third, so first and third with two down, and back to Nate McClough. And a throw to first as. Ryan is chased back. Talked about Lackey and his inability to hold runners. There have been 20 stolen bases with John Lackey on the mound. And the Red Sox have caught only four. 20 to four with Lackey on the mound. Cloud pops it up. Shallow right center field. Who's it going to be? Center fielder gets there, and that is Ellsbury to make the catch and the inning end. So the Orioles don't score. Runner thrown out at the plate, two left. We're through four at Camden Yards. Orioles lead it 3 0.
PNC Bank for the achiever in you. And by your local BMW Center. What a beautiful sky we have downtown tonight. Just a gorgeous day. Yesterday, the air conditioning was turned off at the Hunter household. Yeah, it was great so day. nice. Windows open. I think it's back on today. Chris Tillman has been in command here four scoreless innings. And he's allowed only one hit, four base runners, but three by walk. One of the things about Tillman, Mike, and his improvement, and the, a number that you can judge how a pitcher is getting it done is, is how many base runners does he allow. And Chris is at 12.2, which is coming down. And Wei and Chen having fun with Miguel Gonzalez on the bench. Wei in knows what, four languages? When he speaks Spanish, I know that. I saw him talking to you, Darvish, so that had to be Japanese the other day in Texas. <laughs> of course, he's from Taiwan, so he knows right. the Mandarin. Says hi to me in English. <laughs> his, his favorite slogan is, how you doing? <laughs> Jones in center field as a play off the bat of Stephen Drew. And one away here in the fifth inning. Now, most consecutive home starts with a victory. As Chris Tillman with four trying to move up on this list. Scott Erickson has the Orioles record with eight. 1999 into the 2000 season. Messina did it seven in a row in one season in 95. Erickson again, 96 97. Those were two playoff teams. Messina again in 99. I see a pattern here. Big Ben McDonald, five, and Jimmy Key, five. Jimmy Key in 97. That was his first year as an Oriole. He got off to just a brilliant start before he hurt his elbow. Yes, and he did. you were a member of that team. Well, it's great to see Chris Tillman on that list, though. Well, obviously, some pretty good uh, pitchers there. Chris Tillman certainly making a mark for himself. All about consistency. You, you win by pitching. Chris, or, Chris Tillman really learned a lot about himself, though. I mean, he's he's had his bumps in the big leagues. He really has. I mean, obviously, last year not making the team and then being called back up. I think it was huge for Chris. Build his confidence. And then uh, got off to a great start. You see the numbers there at home, five and two. On the road, that's seven and one. So really good numbers for Chris Tillman. And he got him. Iglesias can't catch up to the off-speed pitch. There's number five for Tillman. And two away here in the fifth inning. Talk about that great changeup that he's been offering. And here's a beautiful one down in the zone. Iglesias giving chase to it, but it's that sell with the arm speed. It comes in about 10 miles an hour slower than his fastball. Jose Iglesias, just 23 years old out of Cuba. The two down. There's Tillman protecting this 3 0 lead. Here's Ellsbury for his third at bat. Shows Bunt takes a strike. Ellsbury is trying to get through this season and help Boston to a playoff push, but also to stay healthy as he'll hit the free agent market at the end of the season as we head into the offseason. Ground ball that is fair and it hit the base. And that's going to roll down the line. Marcakis a long run. Ellsbury is heading to second. And he's got a two out double. Talk about a line hugger. <laughs> Not only hugged the line, it hit the base as it was rolling by. It's only the second base hit for Boston, a two out double in the fifth. Well, that base uh, really kind of prevented it, I think, from possibly getting down in that right field corner. And help the Orioles out right there. So a runner in scoring position with two down for Victorino who was lined out to left and bounced out to shortstop. One of three switch hitters in the Boston lineup. Strike one. Victorino has been a, a two time all star. 
Ellsbury blazing speed at second base. Hardy's trying to keep him close. Swings through it on two. Really I don't know if, it, if, if it's just perception tonight, but his 93 looks 98 to me. It really the way the, the hitters are swinging late. He's not picking it up very well. And I think the angle that Tillman creates, a lot like Lackey, get a lot of swing throughs on the high fastball, the elevated fastball. Nice block by Weeders as that ball bounced in. Good idea by Tillman. 0 and 2 in the count. Bounce one in there, see if the hitter will chase. I'm going to check back at Ellsbury. And the 1 2 is oh, over the low. Tillman was heading to the dugout. Wow. Everybody should be heading towards the where, dugout. Where did that miss? Les Diaz has had a pretty good night, but I think he got caught up here. Yeah, take a look at the pitch. I mean, that's right down the heart of the plate. Beautiful pitch. There's a reaction <laughs> right there. <laughs> Not the only one. Wow. I mean, Weeders moved the glove, but it, that pitch was clearly at the knees. So instead of a strikeout to end the inning, Victorino is another crack here at Tillman. Two and two with two down. And he just got a piece. The Red Sox have been in first place a total of 98 days on the season. And they have held down the division lead by themselves since May the 27th. Tampa Bay tonight is in New York. They're a half game out, and the Rays have a 6-1 to one lead on the Yankees in the fourth. Another 2-2 two -two to Victorino. Low ball three. That's pretty close, too. Another fastball at 94 miles an hour. And take a look here. He catches that box. Pretty good pitch right there. A couple fastballs not being called for Chris Tillman. A three and two. There's Tillman battling here against Victorino. Slice foul the other way. Machado over. He'll run out of room. It's back in the crowd. A nice crowd on hand here on this Friday night. And lots of orange. As Mike and I were walking back after helping out at the food drive, that was one of the things that we noticed that with the Red Sox here, who usually travel a lot of fans, it was a sea of orange on the concourse. Sure was. Another 3 2 to Victorino. They're anxious for their Orioles to get back in town. Fly ball to center field, chasing Jones back. Adam will get there. And he has it for the out, and the inning is over. So the two out double doesn't hurt as Ellsbury is left stranded. Mid fifth at Camden Yards, 3 0 O's.
Dodge Charger seamlessly merge modern aerodynamic style while complementing its storied heritage. The standard V6 292 horsepower, 260 pound foot of torque, and 31 highway MPG delivers mid size fuel efficiency in a full size car. Drive one today. And there is the Charger out there by the Bambino. That sounded like a car guy. Sounded good. 260 foot found of torque. You couldn't handle that car. Probably not. <laughs> Monkey has some uh, mud in his cleats. The trainer had to come out. Lackey has allowed three runs on seven hits. As the Orioles try to grab the opener in this three game weekend series. And you know they're keeping an eye on this in New York where the Rays are a half game back. Tampa Bay has Jeremy Hellickson against the Yankees tonight in a six to one lead. Manny Machado will take ball one. Manny and RBI single his last at bat. Vicious cut and he fouled it off. The Red Sox with Lackey on the mound tonight, and he's been a big part of this. In 17 of their last 21 starts, their starter has allowed three runs or less. And he is right at three runs as he works here in the fifth inning. Two and one on Machado, Marquecas and Jones to follow. Three nothing O's in the fifth. Foul back to our right. Glacius back and towards the line at third. Shot out a right field, playable for Victorino. And one away here in the fifth. All time now for the fifth inning home run bonus. For this inning only, tonight's Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game. Will receive $500 for any Orioles home run. Now Mary Willis has already won $1,200 tonight. For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game, play five card cash. Go to mdlottery.com slash Orioles to enter. Ball one to Marcakis, who got the rally going in the first with a two out single. So Nick is now hitting five in a row. Ball two inside. John Lackey signed a five year free agent contract for the Red Sox beginning with the 2010 season for eighty two and a half million dollars. The Sox are paying him fifteen point two five this year and next year in the final two years of that deal. And of course last year he sat out rehabbing from the Tommy John surgery. I know the Red Sox certainly expected more to Lackey John Farrell. Would like to see a lot more, but they're certainly happy with the way he's pitching this year. They talked about the injuries and how he has certainly stepped up and done a good job. Part of it is uh, he hasn't gotten the run support when he is out on the mound, but a very good earned run average. He's in the top 10 in the American League with a 2.95 earned run average. Slice down the line, a long run for Iglesias, and he made the catch. Oh, my goodness. Jose Iglesias never gave up on it, and he stabbed it just before it fell to the ground. What a play, and two men down. That was a pretty impressive defensive play. And you're right, he never gave up on it. His eyes are on this ball the whole way, right at the end. Just flips his glove out. Great play. I mean, he came up through knowing. Everybody in the Red Sox organization knew he had a fabulous glove, but he got an opportunity this year with Middlebrooks kind of scuffling a little bit, and his bat ended up becoming red hot. And he's been there every day, third baseman. 
And he's been making some spectacular plays, and he has the versatility to move to short and second as well. Well, I was going to ask you, I, I thought he was their shortstop of the future. All right. Who, who does that remind you of? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mr. Right. Machado, Man. also playing third base. He may be the shortstop of the future, but he is the third baseman of the present. With Alexi Casilla on the bench. 1 0 on Jones. High fly right field. They got a lot of this one. Back out in Victorino. And that ball is gone. He did it again. Right down the date, folks. July 26. Jones goes deep twice the opposite way. And it's a 4 0 Oriole lead. Here's our Lexus of Towson drive of the game. Yeah, Adam Jones, you have to do a lot of things right to be able to hit a couple home runs to right field. And he gets behind it once again. And it just hammers this ball. The ball came back over the plate, and Adam Jones just destroyed it to right field. The drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, Baltimore's number one Lexus dealer. See why at LexusofTowson.com. So Adam Jones with a multi home run game. He now has 22, three RBI night. He now has 74. And then grounded foul off the bat of Davis. Third multi home run game of his career. A one on one on Chris, and another two out rally for the Orioles. One and two. In the first inning, two outs, nobody on. Marquez is single, Jones homer. And there's the shift. In this inning, two outs, nobody on, and Jones homer. Pedroia is in shallow right field. And Davis down on strikes, and the inning ends. That is the second strikeout for Blackie. Mr. Jones is having a night. Two opposite field home runs and a 4 nothing Oriole lead. Sixth inning, and what a return home for the Orioles. Jim Hunter with Mike Bord again, looking for some big base hits behind good pitching. We're seeing it both in this game. Jones with the two big home runs, all in support of Chris. Yeah, Chris Tillman's throwing a great ball game. He got into a jam there in the first inning, found a way to pitch himself out of it. Really kind of stymieing this Red Sox offense, but the Orioles offense, nice to see them kind of exploding. Adam Jones, red hot right now with two opposite field home runs. Manny Machado with a big single up the middle score run as well. And how about three of the four runs in this game? Scoring after two outs and nobody on. The Orioles have been exceptional this year with those two out runs. They're huge in this game. Yeah, sure are. I mean, it's so important, obviously, for any team to be able to score with two run two outs, and uh, Orioles proving that they can do it tonight, and they've done it all season long. So here is Pedroia leading off, and Tillman right at him for a strike. The 
Pedroia, Ortiz, and Napoli against Chris. Breaking ball bounces. Chris Tillman in his career in the AL East, 10 wins and 12 losses. This is a tough, tough division when you are a young pitcher trying to learn your way towards consistently and navigate your way through these lineups. It sure is. There is no let up. You have to keep your focus through the whole game. Really, every pitch matters. Enjoy a thousand back. Droya one out of two. Check swing and it's outside. Field the first. No swing. Mr. Tim Timmons said so. So the count full three and two. Bounce to third. Machado. One down to the Boston sixth. Well, fans, on Tuesday, the Orioles are opening up a three-game midweek series with their new American League rivals. Yep, the Houston Astros. Good seats still available for each game, including Tuesday's Ollie's Bargain Night, presented, of course, by Ollie's Bargain Outlet. All the upper reserve seats, just nine bucks when you buy them in advance. So get on board for the pennant chase. Gather up your family and friends and save. 888-848-BIRD or online at Orioles.com. David Ortiz takes a strike. Ortiz has walked and he has popped foul to Machado on a ball that moves so much it went right off the end of the bat. And then he swings through it and then it's 0 2. I really like how Tillman, especially now with the lead, he's just challenging these hitters and going right at him. He sure is. We've seen him get his fastball up to 94 here in the middle part of this ball game, but great location with it. I mean, he isn't scared. He's throwing it over the plate, but he's putting it in good spots. And try to climb the ladder with it right there. And not many Red Sox hitters are able to really square his fastball up. And the one two is fouled back. And that one at 95, down and away. A really good pit. And the one two to Ortiz is in the dirt. Now David Ortiz you talk about an all time DH nobody better than him more hits than anybody more home runs more RBIs more runs scored and the best slugging percentage of any DH in Major League history popped up foul out of play and as a result of David Ortiz and his performance Boston has the top DH numbers in the American League this year. The Orioles are 14th. Oriole DHs have batted 201 on the year. Only the Astros at 196 lower. Henry Arruti is hoping to change that. And another pop up. It's back out of play. And Tillman has had some long battles here. This will be the eighth pitch to Ortiz. Victorino's at bat was an eight pitch at bat. He's got Feldman looking on. And the 2 2 swung on and fouled off. Got a piece of the shin guard of Matt Weeders. Oh, I got a piece of that. After five straight fastballs, a really good change up right there from Chris Tillman. You know, speaking of shin guards. Did you know that Weeders changes his shin guards and goes to a different pair every month? I did not know that. Every month he has new shin guards because he says they get beat up so much he needs them for protection in the field. Oh, well, I believe that. I'm getting beat up. Yeah, one, one day in the last homestand, he was in the clubhouse and he had new ones and he was putting the straps on. I said, What are you getting a pair ready just in case? He goes, Oh, no, I need them. 
So really, how often do you change them? Because if I get a month out of them, that's good. Wow. <laughs> I never knew that. Taking care of their equipment. The 3-2. He got him with a fastball. Challenged Ortiz, and Big Poppy swings through it. Well, you know you got a good fastball. You're challenging the best DH in the history of the game. A high fastball there at 95. Ortiz can't quite get to it. Matt Weider's hanging on to it on the back end. See the frustration right there from Ortiz. Just a little extra giddy up on that one. Strikeout number six and two down. Well, there are the pitch numbers as he hits exactly 100. Breaking ball for a strike. There's a get me over curve. Tillman has had two three up three down innings, the second and the third. He also, here's how you win games, Mike. He's retired the first two batters in every inning in the game. So if you're going to rally against him, it's got to be a two outs and nobody on. They nearly did that in the first, but he got out of it. Outside, ball two. Chuck Showalter's club tonight opening up a nine game homestand. They'll have Monday off at home. Napoli, no chance at that pitch. He thought it was a fastball. Tillman pulled the string on him. Well, Tillman's velocity on his fastball is climbing. He's consistently at 93, 94, 95 miles an hour right now. And then he just threw the Bugs Bunny change up at him. <laughs> Napoli, a little surprised on that one at 83 miles an hour. Got him. He went upstairs again. Chris Tillman back to back case to end the sixth and a three up three down inning. Fans loving it at Camden Yards. Back in the first inning with a big two run bomb. Yes, the opposite way as well. Marquecas on base. Manny Machado with a big RBI single in the third, scoring Nate McLeod. And then Brian Roberts staying red hot at the plate. JJ Hardy trying to score from second. Victorino with a good throw. Salt to Lamacchia. The tag on the back. Diaz calls him out at the plate. But Adam Jones strikes again in the fifth with a big solo shot. Extend the lead. Remember, Geico saving people money on more than just car insurance. Matt Weeders takes a strike, leading off here in the Orioles sixth. And a pop up off the fists. And right there, third base of foul ground is Iglesias. A lot of movement on that pitch. Weeders out, he's 0 for 3 and 1 away. There is no activity in the Oriole bullpen. So Tillman will at least come out to start the seventh inning. Well, Tillman looks pretty strong. 
I mean, he's, we talk about his fastball velocity. He's ready. He's around the zone. He's being aggressive. His last outing, 117 pitches, so he's still got some left in the tank. Upstairs to Hardy. Hardy is 0 for 1. He's also drawn a walk. Lackey has thrown strike one to 11 of the 25 Oriole batters he has faced. Tillman has thrown strike one to 14 of 23. And one of the reasons Tillman's pitch count is up there, he's had seven counts that have gone to at least three balls. Center field off the bat of Hardy, Ellsbury back on it. Two down to the Orioles sixth. Now well, fans, when the Orioles win, everybody wins all season long. When the Orioles win and score five or more runs, that means pizza for everybody. You get 50% off the regular menu price with your online order at PapaJohns.com. All you have to do is enter that promo code Orioles5. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's valid at participating Baltimore area Papa John's. Orioles are a run away from that number five mark. They lead it four nothing. Here's Yerudia. And a tapper out in front of the mound. The race is on. Lackey gets it. Fires down the line. And Yerudia is going to head for second base. Pedroia runs it down. Farrell's going to come out to complain that Yerudia was in the baseline. Neither umpire signaled that there was anything going on there. And Yerudia is at second base with two down. We'll take a look. Rarely see this call. No, you really don't. It looks like you're idiot. Well, he is up on the grass. And I can't see them overturning this call. If nobody made the call right away, I can't see them overturning it. You know, the baselines are clearly marked, but you rarely see the umpires change a call that wasn't made. Unless they see it instantly, they don't overturn it. Right. Farrell has a case here. It looked like Henry was clearly out of the baseline. I'm talking about how Napoli can't see the throw. Well, Napoli was kind of blind, and this ball was kind of right up the line as Lackey came up to field it, and then it tailed into the runner a little bit, blocking Napoli out of sight of the ball. That's why it goes up the right field line. But as much as Yerudia may have been on the other side of that line, I think Lackey's throw really was the cause of yeah. the ball going down the line. If he throws it to the other side of the bag, exactly. there's no problem. He threw it to the wrong side of the base. The well, Farrell does not get any satisfaction. It is ruled a throwing error all the way on Lackey. And the Orioles have a runner at second base and two down. So this has been the pattern of the night. And Farrell has a beef, but unfortunately, you just don't see that called. It, it, if they pick it up, the umpires, it's instantly called. You, but you rarely see that. Yes, and usually it's called if the runner is hit with the ball. Right. But again, Lackey, all he had to do is throw it to the other side of the base yeah. and the inning's over. So the Orioles now will try to capitalize with your Rudy at second base and two down. Breaking ball is low and it's one and oh. Four nothing O's were in the sixth opener three against first place Boston. Roberts pops it up. Iglesias in foul ground. He has a play. And he squeezes it for the final out. So the air doesn't hurt. A base runner left at second. We're through six at Camden Yards. The Orioles have the lead.
by head and shoulders. Chris Tillman certainly had it going tonight. Strikeout pitch. He gets Nada, then he gets Ellsbury on the beautiful changeup. High fastball to get Napoli. Salta Lamacchia going down. And a hard breaking ball down and away. Ortiz, best DH in the game. Swing and a miss once again by Napoli. Yes, Chris Tillman, the strikeout pitch. All of them swinging on his game tonight. Well, we'll likely have activity behind him here in the seventh. Buck Showalter will protect his starter and the lead. Nava, Salta, Lamaki, and Drew. And Lackey with Salta, Lamaki on the bench still complaining about the Arudia play. Even as he walked off the field after the final out, he stopped and had a conversation with Laz Diaz. And again, the, the truth is, Mike, if he makes a good throw, it's a non issue. Right. So Tillman going to work. He's at 105 pitches. Here's Nava. And the foul back 0 1. And the Orioles with a real unique shift on against Daniel Nava. He was 0 for 1 with a walk. Yeah, you see, see that guy out there in right field, folks? That's Machado. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's your third baseman. Well, we talk about how Manny Machado has kind of uh, changed the game at third base by how deep he plays. Well, if he was a second baseman, he could afford to play that deep as well, I think. His great range and of course that strong arm. Look at how far back on the outfield grass he is. He's almost out there. He can have a conversation with Marquecas. So Hardy, the only infielder on the other side. Can't catch up to it. One and two. A lot of deep counts have elevated the pitch count for Chris now at 108. He has allowed only two base hits. He has walked three. But Boston just has the ability to prolong at bats. Not here. See you later. Eight K's, one away in the seventh. Pretty impressive by Chris Tillman. Here it is 93 mile an hour fastball. All three pitches fastballs. And he gets this one by him as well. Just not picking up that fastball. A little extra life on the end from Tillman. Seen it the whole ball game. Tommy Hunter now getting loose. One of the eight in the bullpen. Salta Lamaki into the shift. There's Manny. And a long throw, and he got him. All right, folks, if you're keeping score, that's a 5 3. I don't care if he was in right field. Two men down. Yeah, pretty impressive. Salta Lamaki smokes this ball. Typically a one hopper to Nick Marcakis, but Manny Machado there, and he shows his athletic ability with the nice drop step. It gets a smirk on his face, taking one away from Salta Lamakia. Manny, Manny can pretend there's Bobby Dickerson as infield coach. Now, how often do you think Bobby's worked with him on the outfield throw? Actually, quite a bit. They spent a lot of time in spring training working on that positioning because they knew they were going to be aggressive with the shift. Strike one taken by Drew. So with two outs and nobody on, Buck Showalter sticking with Tillman. And Salta Lamacchia helped him out, not only swinging at the first pitch, but making it out on the first pitch. Drew is 0 for 2. Late on the swing, and it's 0 and 2. Very enthusiastic crowd here tonight. First game of the homestand. The outs by distribution 39,063. And big crowds expected the next two days for Boston as well. Another foul ball back. Mentioned the Red Sox lead the major leagues in most pitches seen per plate appearance at 4.03. And we're seeing why here tonight. I haven't seen the Red Sox in a while, but they have a tremendous ability. To foul off pitches and prolong at bats. Another 0 2 pitch to Drew. Bounces it 1 and 2. Stephen Drew, most of his career with Arizona. Now he plays for John Farrell. Buck Showalter on the phone to the pen. To see if Tommy Hunter is ready. It appears he is. He's watching the game out there. A ball and two strikes with two down. And a slow bouncer. There's Hardy on the second base side. And Tillman has a three up, three down inning. 
He has retired the last seven in a row. His night is likely done. Seventh inning stretch and a 4 nothing Orioles lead. Tomorrow, more O's action. Game two of this three game series. Scott Feldman takes the mound. He'll go against fellow right hander Ryan Dempster. Our coverage on Masson HD begins at 6 30 with O's extra presented by Geico. And then game coverage at 7 o'clock on Masson and Masson on WJZ. We've got all the access you need right here on Masson. Here's Nate Clouth. going to take ball one. Leading off here in the Orioles seventh. And Chris Tillman getting those high fives on the bench. Seven shutout innings. He has a 4 nothing lead here in the seventh. Yeah, another great performance by Chris Tillman. The club tripled and scored in the third. He is one out of three. And a good take. Buck Showalter before the game was talking about how he tries not to think about things that he can't control and things that might be perceived as absolute. And he was using as an example, he said, you know, there are some nights where you look at the pitching matchup and you think to yourself as a manager, wow, we really got him tonight. And then you go home and you lost the game. You're like, what the heck happened? And then there are nights where you say to yourself, well, wait a minute. There's a line drive right at Pedro and one down. We have no chance in this game. And you win the game because your starter gave you a good chance and you go home and you say, how the heck did that happen? Yeah. Well, tonight, because Lackey was rained out last night, he's been pitching so well on the Red Sox side, you're feeling pretty good about it because now you got Lackey starting a big series in the division. But what we didn't consider, or at least everybody else didn't consider, is, well, Tillman was on the other side yeah. and he had a lot to say about this. And that's why you hear Showalter all the time talk about what do we do? We stay in the moment. Exactly. And the moment tonight belonged to him. Sure did. I mean, what a performance by Chris Tillman. Talked about him having to step up, especially after the way the Orioles finished off that last road trip with three consecutive losses. Of course, coming home to play a big American League East rival, of course, the Red Sox. And to start a long homestand, and Chris Tillman certainly answered the call there. Great performance. Good take by Manny, two and one. Lackey still staring in at Las Diaz. Tillman, an outstanding night. He allowed only two hits and five base runners in seven innings. Machado deep left. Back it goes and gone for Manny. And a 5 nothing Oriole lead.
Orioles fans loving the home run. Take a look at this elevated fastball that Manny Machado just does not miss. Great sound off the bat into the stands in left field. That ball is hammered by Manny Machado. Blackie, he's done. So the Orioles love the home run. Three tonight, driving at four. They chase Lackey in the seventh with a 5 nothing lead. And the Orioles tag him for five runs on nine hits, all earned runs, a walk, two strikeouts, and three home runs. A pair by Adam Jones and a solo shot by Manny Machado. So Lackey is done. And here is Drake Britton. Yeah, Drake Britton, uh, he's only been in three games so far with the Red Sox. He was called up, obviously, because of some injuries and put into the bullpen, but started in the minor leagues. No numbers on the board. For Drake Britton so far, but he's got some good stuff. Starter stuff, fastball that he can work in the mid to low 90s. Slider, pretty hard slider. That throws 82 to 85 miles an hour, a curveball and a change. But here he is once again with another opportunity to prove to John Farrell that he belongs in the major leagues. So the rookie will go to work on Nick Markakis, one out and nobody on. Nick Singleton scored his first at bat. He is one out of three. So lefty versus lefty. Fastball for a strike going one. Marcakis now with a five game hitting streak facing this 24 year old. And one Texan relieves another. Lackey from Abilene. Witness from Pumble. Twenty third round pick back in two thousand seven. What a night for the Orioles with a big crowd on hand to Camden Yards. Pulled the first love there by Napoli bobbles it. But able to get it to the bag for the second out. And Marcus is retired. And two away. Now Adam Jones will come up now. And this is somewhat of a historic night for Adam Jones. He not only has two home runs, but both home runs have been hit to right field. Going with the pitch, a two run shot in the first inning, first multi home run game of the season. Now, why that is unique, since 2008 coming into tonight, he has hit a total of four home runs to right field since 2008, and he's got two in the same game tonight. There you go. Pretty good approach. And Adam Jones is certainly strong enough. And he's shown that tonight, but consistently, I think Adam Jones proving to himself that he can use the whole field for power. Want to know? Ooh, borderline call. 
Adam Nodge has said no. Yep, that fan wants three, and he's in the right place. He's out there by the flag court. Hey, hit it this way. You know, the other thing about his night, if you go back over the season, there's that fan up there on the flag court. Whenever Adam has been looking to really get back in a groove, what has he done? He's gone the opposite way. Jim Presley talks to him. They work on it. They do the drills, and he gets base hits the other way, and all of a sudden he goes on a tear. Well, tonight he's got two hits the other way, and both left the ballpark. Yeah, Jim Presley has kind of instilled that philosophy in a lot of his hitters. If they tend to struggle, usually it's because they're leaking on the front side, meaning they're pulling that front side out a little bit, not staying on the ball long enough. And when you go the opposite way, it just allows you to see the ball, catch it a little bit deeper in the strike zone, and then use the whole field. Different time in that. Adam right on that. He just missed it. Now three and two. Tampa Bay now has a seven to one lead on the Yankees. They had a six run second inning. Hellickson is still in there for Tampa Bay. Three and two on Jones, two outs, and the base is empty. And he got him. Oh, what a nasty pitch that was. Down and in. But the Orioles add a run. Manny Machado's major league leading 134th base hit. It leaves the yard as ninth home run, and the Orioles have a 5 0 lead. Shut out innings on just two hits. He walked three and he struck out eight. And uh, if you believe that he got stronger as the game went on, you're right. His last inning was his most efficient inning. Look at the innings and pitches by inning. 11 in the second, but 10 pitches in the seventh inning. And how about this? Uh, our Twitter chatter tonight, former Oriole Luis Matos watching us. He tweeted out, Tillman is nasty. And as a player, when you're nasty, that's a good thing. It sure is. And <laughs> Luis Matos knows a nasty pitcher when he sees one, and he is certainly right. Chris Tillman was really good in uh, Matos' terms, nasty. Tommy Hunter now in the ball game, 39. This will be his 40th game of the season. 2.85 earned run average, 40 strikeouts to just nine base on ball. See that opponent average at 212, right? He's just 125 off Tommy. Strike one is taken by Iglesias. And a bouncer towards Hardy. One down in the Boston eighth. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Orioles, may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Tillman retired the final seven he faced. Tommy Hunter gets the first. Adam Jones 
He's been a big contributor tonight, two for four with a couple of home runs. Tommy is well rested. He hasn't pitched since last Saturday. And he's trying to put together a good solid outing. He's allowed runs in his last three outings. Six runs in his last three and a third innings. Over but low, 2 0 on Ellsbury. Maz Diaz not liking the low strike. They're not calling too many of them in this ballgame. Line drive, there's a base hit. Ripped over the head of J.J. Hardy for a one out single. So Ellsbury's got his second base hit and he's on with one down. Fans, MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. It's available for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Orioles baseball, live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and much, much more. Just text at bat to 31826 or visit Orioles.com for all of the details. There's Ellsbury, who is hitless on the night. Fastball sails outside, 1 and 0. Center field, Jones back on it. Adam will glide back. He has a play. And two down in the eighth inning. You know, when we have big crowds at the ballpark like there is tonight, one of the things that amazes me is when you look around, the three prime standing areas are always packed. Yeah. You have the flag court, you have out beyond the bullpens out there by Legends Park, and then, of course, the bar in center field over the batter's eye. All three of those areas are packed as the fans all want to congregate together and hang out. Here's the Frank Robinson statue we just caught a peek of out there. Breaking ball for a strike to Dustin Pedroia. Here's Cal. Out there in Legends Park. There's so many people out there you can't even see cakes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pedroia is one out of three. Ellsbury chased back. Ellsbury leads the American League in steals, but unlikely he'll be running down 5 nothing in the eighth. Tampa Bay 7-1 to one over the Yankees. They go to the seventh. Sabathia was shelled in that game. He has not been pitching well. No. If this score holds and that score holds, Tampa Bay moves in the first place. They'll be a half game up on the Sox. And the Orioles will be three games out. Brian Mattis getting loose. Two and one on Dustin Pedroia. Began the night 10th in the league in batting. Machado, ooh, in between hop, goes to second. And the force there on the hustling Ellsbury, that ends the inning. Well, one out single off Tommy Hunter, one left. Mid eighth at Camden Yards. The Birds have the lead.
Cross Blue Shield will contribute $50 to support the Y of Central Maryland's Fit and Fun program. To date, the Orioles have drawn 250 walks for a total of $12,500. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and a more active lifestyle. All right, I've been perusing these standings again. And if the Orioles win, they'll still be four down in the loss column. So it actually, they'll be three and a half out, even though Tampa Bay will leap over Boston. They'll gain the full game on Boston. So they're edging closer, but the, the most important thing when you when you look at this at this time of year is how many are you down in the loss column? And there'll still be four back in that. Right. Because Tampa Bay will have 42 and the Orioles have 46, but they will have 58 wins. So that's how you get three and a half. Tampa Bay would be 61. So three wins but four losses. Yeah. Well, from Tampa Bay's perspective, all they care about is that the Orioles win so they can <laughs> leap <laughs> yeah. over Boston and the Orioles close the gap. It's all about closing the gap. It seems like that's going to be the trend from here on out with so many games left within the division. Britain gets Davis to swing and miss. One and two the count. Chris with a strikeout in the fifth. He's one out of three. He has now struck out in 20 consecutive games. 33 K's in that span. Strike three. Fastball on the outside corner. Davis doesn't agree. Says something to Laz Diaz as he walks away. And saying that's a ball. That's a ball. This deep into the season, I think all hitters pretty well aware of their strike zone. That pitch appeared to be off the plate. Take a look on the pitch track. Pretty close. So Davis is down. He is one out of four. Two strikeouts for Britain. And we have a pitching change coming on as John Farrell is out. One out, nobody on. Five nothing O's in the eighth. Here are the candidates, Adam Jones, a two-home run, three-RBI night. How about Manny Machado? A home run, RBI single, a two-RBI night. Or Chris Tillman, seven shutout innings. Wow, tough choices tonight. Text in your vote now. Have your voice heard, A, B, or C, to 31826. And a new pitcher on for Boston. Jose De La Torre comes into the ballgame. This will be his sixth appearance. He's been up and down a couple times. He was called up back on May 9th when Hanrahan went on the DL. They've gotten a good look at him. His numbers aren't glowing by any means, but he has uh, three pretty good pitches. He's earned run average up to 6.52 at this point in the season. He's been used in long relief mop up type roles, but he has a fastball slider and a changeup, and he uses all three of them pretty consistently throughout in the bat. Came up through the Mets organization. He's also been with Cleveland and now with Boston. He's a rookie. Yep, this is the Bird's house, and they have a 5-0 lead in the eighth. 
Matt Wieters is hitless on the night. A seven game hitting streak is on the line. Cube foul behind Bobby Dickerson 0 1. Well, the Orioles have nine base hits. Koji Uahar closest to us and Tazawa behind him, a couple of right handers. Hi, Koji. One and two on Weeders. Readers has flied out twice to left and popped up foul to third. Fastball's too tight. For Boston in the ninth, Ortiz, Napoli, and Nava, four, five, and six are due up. And that one swept to second base. Pedroia on a knee to field. Readers retired for the second out here in the eighth inning. One of the things that Buck Showalter said as a manager is the most difficult part of the game to get back into the routines after an all-star break because of the four days off is the bullpen. And the Orioles, especially the first part of that road trip, the starters were going so deep. There's Jim Johnson. This is not a safe situation, but Jim hasn't pitched since last Saturday. He's yeah. got to get in the game. He fouls it straight down 0 and 2. Orioles, for the moment anyway, going with that eight man bullpen and a three man bench. He was able to get Patton and Mattis in the game last night in Kansas City. One and two as that pitch bounces. I'll take a look at JJ Hardy here, Verizon Fios showing that. JJ Hardy's batting average versus pitch type fastball 260 breaking ball 251 and that change up at 223 pretty consistent throughout there but he's certainly hunting fastballs and he would love to have him on that inner third one and two on Hardy deep left field that ball's got a chance down the line it is Right down the line, it stayed fair. Hardy goes deep, his 18th, and a 6 nothing Oriole lead. <laughs> Orioles loving the long ball, four home runs. Tonight, five out of six runs by way of the home run. J.J. Hardy joining that hit parade there. Orioles last homered four times in a game on May the 29th here against the Nationals. And here's Yerudia. Yerudia to left field with authority, but right there is Nava. And he has it for now. Then the inning is over. When J.J. Hardy hits his 18th, Jim Johnson will come on to close it out. The Orioles head to the ninth with a 6-0 lead.
Davis Investments, Baltimore's oldest and largest full-service investment company. Call 1-800-222-3246 or visit ChapinDavis.com. Well, it's been a lovely night here at the ballpark. Almost a perfect night. A 6-0 lead for the Orioles. And Jim Johnson gets it a game for the first time since last Saturday. Last 24 games, 1.66 on the ERA with 20 saves. Yeah, he has been dominant. His fastball velocity has been up. He's had good movement on his two-seamer, and he's mixing in the breaking ball. Here he is. This will be his 50th appearance. 3.55 earned run average, and there it is, 35 saves on the season. On an average 262, lefties 250, and the righties click better at 276. We'll face David Ortiz, who is 0 for 2 on the night. He is 1 for 3 on the night. First ball swing, hit it against the shift. Johnson picked up saves in the first two games on the road trip last Friday night and then again Saturday in Texas. The Orioles win on Monday was not a save situation, so he didn't get in the game. And then the Birds lost three in a row and he didn't get in. Strike one taken by Napoli. Napoli has struck out twice. He has walked. Welcome back, bouncer to third. Machado, Roberts, Davis. Five, four, three, double play, and two men down. And that erases the leadoff single. Here's an update on the voting for the AT&T player of the game. And right now, Adam Jones in the lead, two for four with a couple of home runs and three RBIs. Still time to text in your vote, A, B, or C, to 31826. And Tom and Rick will have the results coming up on those extra post game. Mr. Jones has had himself a night. He sure has. And Manny Machado now moving in the shift after short right field. Nava fouls it off, 0 1. Fans have come to their feet in anticipation of the final out. What a great side here tonight. Lots of arms, lots of enthusiasm, big crowd, and a big Orioles lead. Right at him, on two. Great move at 94 miles an hour. That started right at the hip of Nava. Came back over that inner third. Two check swing. Did he go too far? Yes, he did, and the ball game is over. And the Orioles get the opener of this three-game weekend series. A very quick ninth inning for Jim Johnson. He allowed a hit. And Adam Jones, the star of this one, one of the stars anyway, but maybe his the biggest star as the Orioles win it by the final of 6 nothing. So the Orioles grab the opener in this three-game series. Buck Showalter's bird snapped the three-game losing streak, and Chris Tillman picks up his 13th win. 6 nothing O's your final.